So I wanted to do some testing with the R5C to see how long this battery lasted in different recording formats. I didn't expect it to take me a whole day to do it, but it did. And I thought, well, while I'm doing it, I might as well share the results with you guys, because it may help some of you with your decision on buying the R5C or not. Because a lot of people have been commenting online that the battery that the camera comes with, the battery that goes inside basically, that only lasts 40 minutes recording video, continuous video, because this doesn't have a cutoff like the R5 at 29 minutes and 59 seconds. This will record unlimited basically, because it has the fan. So I wanted to do the testing to see if it was true and to see which formats I can get the maximum time recording from the battery. I would never recommend anybody run their battery down to the point the camera shuts itself down because you could corrupt your file. The R5C has a nice feature. When it shuts down, it shuts itself down. So it even cleans the sensor basically. So it's not just running out of power and that's it. It actually shuts itself down when the battery gets really low. Now online over the last few days, there's been a few people mentioning that when the battery gets really low and it shuts itself down, if you switch it to photo mode, like that and when it reboots back up there's actually two bars of the battery left and then when you switch it back to video there's nothing i'm guessing that the fact is the camera uses hardly any power when it's in photo mode so there's a little bit of power left in the battery and that little bit of power that's left in the battery is a safety precaution when you're in video mode that you don't corrupt your file so i think that's what it is it could, it could be completely wrong but that's my guess of what it is. If I am wrong, let me know down in the comment section. And another nice feature with the R5C is the tally light that's at the front. At the moment, the tally light is green. When I start recording, this tally light at the front will go red, the same as my C70 that I'm looking at at the moment. Now, when the battery gets down to five minutes left of recording, this tally light will start to blink, which is nice to have an indication like that that your battery's getting low. And it's a visual indicator as well. So you could be away from the camera using this as a B cam, and you can look over at the camera and the red light starts blinking and it's quite obvious the battery's getting low. So that's a nice feature that they built into the R5C, which is the same as what the C70 has. So my setup was quite simple. I had the 24-105 f4 RF lens. I had the Tautra Mirage matte box with the variable ND and I had the Rode Video Mic Go 2 on the camera recording audio. Now I was just recording one of the bird feeders we got in the garden. Um, I just thought I set the camera up and just let it do the recording. The reason I did the testing outdoors is most of my work is actually outdoors and that's a real world environment for me. I could have done it in a controlled environment indoors but that's not how I shoot. So this test was for me and hopefully it helps some of you but like I said it's not in a controlled environment. So the outdoor temperature was about 20 degrees and the camera had been out all day because the testing took me all day. I let the camera record until the battery shut the camera down basically. Then I took the battery out, let the camera cool down for 30 minutes. Then I put in a new fully charged battery and then started the recording over again in a different format. And after that finished, I let the camera cool down for 30 minutes and then I put another battery in. So I have all of the times here on my iPad. Now the camera fan was sent to auto. I didn't put it into low mode. I thought I'd let the camera do all the work and let the camera judge when it needed the fan. So I just put it into auto mode basically and the screen on the back was on all the time. So it was just a basic setup really for somebody doing a talking headshot outdoors, which at the moment I seem to be doing quite a lot of them. So let's go through some of the different recording formats and the actual times I got from the camera. So the first format I recorded in was 4K, 10-bit, 25p, long got, XAVC. Now the fan didn't come on once. Like I said earlier, the fan was set to auto, so I let the camera decide on when it was going to turn the fan on. The fan didn't come on once. I got 68 minutes and 26 seconds from the battery. From starting recording to the camera shutting down, it recorded a file of 68 minutes, 26 seconds, which is pretty impressive for such a small battery, basically. So the next format was 4K, 10-bit, interframe. Now, this is about double the data being recorded as long got. Now I got from that 63 minutes and nine seconds. So there's about five minutes difference in recording and the fan didn't come on again. In the 4K mode, into frame, the fan didn't come on once. That's not too bad to get 63 minutes, nine seconds from that battery. Now the next format is 8K RAW 25P and the fan did come on. The fan was on constant. The whole time I was recording the 8K, the fan was on all the time. I got 57 minutes and 59 seconds. 
that's the actual length of the video file that was recorded on the card. Now that's pretty good to think I got nearly 60 minutes on the R5C unlimited in 8K RAW. Now the next format was in the Super 35 crop. Now this camera will crop, it will do Super 35 and Super 16 and in both of those formats it will record RAW. Now on Super 35 I was recording RAW HQ which is the high quality, 6K file 25P and I got 67 minutes and 53 seconds. So I almost got the same as I got in 4K long up basically and that's a 6K RAW file. You can use something like this if you're shooting in Super 35 mode, which is a speed booster. Basically, this gives you full frame, field of view, but you're recording in APS-C mode or Super 35 mode. I do have a review coming on this soon because it's been sent to me to review, and I will be reviewing this and also comparing it to the Canon equivalent, which is a lot more expensive than this. It's a very affordable speed booster, actually. So you can get something like that, or you could use something like this, which is the Sigma 18-35 f 1.8 APS-C lens. Now this is an EF lens, so you need the adapter obviously. But this is my favorite lens. I use this all the time on the C70 and the Red Komodo. It's a constant 1.8 throughout the whole zoom. It's an 18 to 35. And it works perfect on the R5C in Super 35 mode. Probably one of the best lenses you get if you're starting out shooting video or if you've been shooting video for quite a while. You can't go wrong with one of these lenses, especially in low light. So the next format was 8K LT RAW, which is light RAW basically, 50p. Now the whole time the camera was recording outside, the fan didn't come on once. Don't know why, just decided it didn't need a fan. I have to say, when I took the battery out and took the memory card out, they were really hot, but the fan didn't come on once. I got 40 minutes and 57 seconds. So that's where the 40 minutes record time from this battery comes from, if you're shooting in 8K 50p. There aren't many people that are going to be shooting in 8K 50p. Now, one thing you have to be careful when you're shooting RAW is your noise level in your image is going to increase quite a lot. It can get quite noisy, so you do have to purchase a really good denoising software if you're going to be shooting in RAW. So you do have to be careful with that because the camera's not doing any of the work for you. It's not basically denoising the image for you or anything. When you're shooting in RAW, you're getting the RAW file. Now, while I was shooting in RAW, I was using this lens, which has been sent to me by Lauer. This is a 35mm 0.95 full frame lens. Now, the reason I use this lens is when you're shooting in 8K 50 or 60p, you have to use an external power source so that the camera can control the lens. So if you've got an electronic lens, you're not gonna get any control from it. So I whacked on a manual lens because I had it. And this is an RF mount, so it went straight on the camera. This is an incredibly good lens. I'm gonna be doing a review on this soon. I'm actually working on it at the moment. This has about a 280 degree focus row and actually has a switch where you can actually de-click the aperture ring. At the moment it's clicked, but if you look like that, it de-clicks it. It's an absolute beautiful lens. Now the next format that I shot was 4K XF AVC into frame, 100 frames a second. Not 120, I did 100 frames. Now that recorded continuously for 45 minutes and 50 seconds, which will give you over three hours of slow-mo footage. I don't know anybody that would need three hours of slow-mo footage. You may do, you may be working on a very special project, but that's bonkers that you can get three hours of slow-mo footage from this camera. You probably get even longer if you're shooting 120 frames, but I was shooting 100 frames. So the final test was with the R5C, and the new Tascan, what is it called? Microphone adapter, which plugs into the new multi-shoe on the top of the R5C and actually on the R3. You're actually listening to it now. It's powering my Rode NTG4 and it's putting the audio into the R3. So you can actually see how good the audio quality is. Because the R5C supplies power to that unit and then that unit supplies power to my microphone because it's phantom power, I was curious to see how much more battery that would drain while recording audio. So I recorded two channels, and like I said, it was powering my Rode NTG4, which is Phantom Power. Now that was recording in 4K, 10-bit, 25p, into frame. The fan didn't come on again in that mode. Now I got, where is it? There it is, 58 minutes and 40 seconds. So I lost about three and a half minutes of battery power powering the Tascan unit and the Tascan unit powering my microphone. So those are all the different formats that I tested. Like I said at the beginning, I let the camera record until the battery ran out and shut the camera down. Then I took the battery out, I let it cool down for 30 minutes, then I put in a new fully charged battery and then record another format. 
it was a really interesting and very long process to test this camera but it's nice to know that the camera will record a lot longer than 40 minutes especially in the xf avc modes 4k they are absolutely beautiful on, on the c70 i have tried the raw on the c70 but i'm having huge problems with the canon software for some reason it won't export the file so i've just given up with the raw on the c70 xf avc 10 bit into frame is absolutely beautiful from that camera and it's the same with the r5c but i will say the r5c is a lot sharper it looks almost like 8k footage and you're shooting in 4k so that's a nice thing about the r5c is it makes a great b cam but also could be a good a cam as well because the files look absolutely amazing from this camera so that was it for the testing i really hope it's helped some of you guys with your decision to buy an r5c and like i said it's good to know that you're definitely gonna get a lot more than 40 minutes recording from that battery and don't forget i will have a review coming on this which is the lower 35 mil 0.95 lens and the review will be mostly video to be truthful there will be some photos in there and i will talk about the photography part but I will be covering most video with this lens because it has such a beautiful manual focus, which is about 280 degrees, and it has a nice D-clicked aperture ring. It's a really nice lens, but it weighs it's so heavy. It's about as heavy as the R5C. Actually, no, it feels heavier for some reason. And then there'll also be a video coming in a few days on some accessories I recommend for the R5C for both photo and video. I'm still waiting for a couple of them to turn up. This audio is actually being recorded on the new Tascan. What is it actually called? C-A-X-L-R. 2DC. Now I do have a review coming on this because this does something very special as well, which I wasn't aware of until I got it. So there will be a full review on this, covering all different features and giving you some audio quality to check out for yourself. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.